In this video, we are going to learn about tree diagrams. A tree diagram is a way to organize different outcomes in probability situations and a way to help you calculate probabilities. And the reason it's called a tree diagram is because the diagram actually sort of looks like a tree with different branches. So let's think about an example where we are rolling a die and we're concerned with whether or not we roll a five. So sort of the two different possible outcomes is that you could roll a five or you could not roll a five. And we're not going to distinguish between all of the different numbers that are not a five because we only really care if it's a five or not. Now, notice what we've done so far is labeled these two different branches, rolling a five and not rolling a five. We also want to label them with the probabilities that correspond. So the probability of rolling a five is one out of six, because there's one five on the die. And the probability of not rolling a five is five out of six. Now, suppose we do this again. So we're playing a game where we roll a die twice, and in order to win, you have to get a five both times or something like that. So once we have done our first roll, which is what is represented by this branch so far, coming off of each of these endpoints, we're going to have two more branches to represent the second roll. So let's say the first time we rolled a five. In the second roll, we could again roll a five or we could not roll a five. And the probabilities will be the same as they were before. The probability of rolling a five is still one sixth and the probability of not rolling a five is five sixths. Same thing below. It will look exactly the same as this, just copied down here. If we didn't roll a five at first, on the second roll, we could either roll a five or not roll a five. And the probabilities would be one sixth and five sixth. Now, depending on the situation, maybe you would keep going. If you were going to roll a die three times, you'd need more branches coming off of each. So you can see that the tree diagram can quickly get sort of messy if it's a large situation, but this works well for simple situations where you don't need a bunch of different branches. Now we can use the branches and the probabilities that we wrote to figure out the probability of each of the four ultimate outcomes. So for example, along the top, so this sequence of branches, that's the situation where you roll a five first and roll a five the second time. Because these events are independent, we can multiply the probabilities in order to figure out the ultimate probability. So the probability of two fives, that means rolling a five each time, will be one sixth times one sixth or one thirty sixth. Now if we think about this sequence of branches, rolling a five and then not rolling a five, that will be one sixth times five sixths. So you just multiply the two probabilities together to get five out of 36. We can also think about what's the probability of not rolling a five and then rolling a five. And again, just multiply the probabilities five six times one six and we get five out of 36. And we could lastly figure out the probability of rolling not a five and not a five again. And when we multiply five out of six times five out of six, we get 25 out of 36. So the tree diagram is a great, great way to organize this sequence of events in order to quickly calculate all of these probabilities. So this is great for a situation where there's multiple questions being asked of you all about the same event so that you can quickly figure out each probability and answer the question. Big things to remember are 
You always want to label your branches with what they represent so that you remember, especially if it gets complicated. Also label them with the probabilities so that they can help you to quickly label or figure out the ultimate probabilities. Now the only time you might not label the probabilities is if all the probabilities are the same. So if it had been like one half and one half and one half and one half, everything was one half, it might seem redundant to label it all the time. And so it's up to you if you don't want to in that case. But in a situation where probabilities are different, it definitely helps to label all of them so that you don't get mixed up.